Why are the bridges this way? They can be burned into ash and will still rise the next nightfall. And yet this spot is less stable than the rest. It is strange. There likely isn't a reason for it. It's just another piece of madness. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Death by Pony, and today we're hopping back into Lake of Voices. Without further ado, let's hop in. <sighs> the grass ignites easily, and showers the area with enough light to keep anything else that might be lurking in the forest at bay. I release a discreet sigh. We're truly lucky no one was injured or lost during this ordeal. I keep that thought to myself, however. Hearing it would only make Margaret feel worse. You should go back to your position, Kika. It will all be for nothing if we can't make it onto the bridges in the first place. Right. I force myself to sound bold. We're going to get through this. Margaret attempts to smile at me, and Bamele waves his, uh, waves as his, as I cautiously back up onto my original position. I return my full focus to the shore as we feared. This has become a pressing situation. More prowlers rose from the water while my attention was on those two. They surrounded the guide on both sides. The only way to gain distance from them would be to delve further into the island. Yet the guide shows no sign of giving up on his position. He remains where he is, resolving to keep all the monsters near him in sight. I grow more unnerved the longer I watch this. The guide seems impervious to the dangers of Sinlos. This is the first case where I can't tell whether he will continue to be fine, as always, or not. Uh, it's a distressing notion. As they creep ever closer, I can't stay silent any longer. Your safety is most important. Consider retreating. He doesn't face me, but replies. I cannot do that. Nixie recognized signs of weakness. Backing away will only increase the odds of them attacking. I grip my lantern tighter as I swallow hard. What can I do? As if to answer my own question, a thought whispers into my mind, and I look down at the lantern in my hand. I can throw it. As long as I don't let it go too far down the shore, it doesn't seem plausible that Nixie could take it. But if I do lose the lantern, especially after Margaret lost hers only moments ago, then... Throw the lantern! I nod firmly to myself, and set on the decision, I've seen the guide perform the move right in front of me. I know it isn't as impossible feat. Now something has to be done. I inch my way towards the most advanced group of Nixie. They drift slowly as they attempt to get behind the guide. I am of no concern to them, at least for the time being. The guide spots me as we make eye contact for a moment. He doesn't say anything and abruptly fixes his gaze elsewhere. He gives me the impression that he's aware of what I'm planning on doing. He ignores me because he doesn't want the Nixie to recognize a coming threat. I study my arm and assume a strong stance. I stop for a heartbeat and then take a deep breath. Then I jump forward a small way and toss my lantern towards the group of Nixie on the guide's right. They're all caught completely off guard, plexically wheezing as they scatter and dive back into the depths below. None of them even attempt to steal the lantern. That's a great relief. The guide seizes his moment to swing his staff at the group of Nixie on his left. The light edging closer to them combined with the general chaos disturbs the creatures enough to frighten them. The left group joins the right in retreat. The guide observes the water line, making certain that they have all crawled back into the water, and then releases a small sigh. He walks over to retrieve my lantern off the sand where it landed, keeping his eyes fixed steadily behind him. He tentatively, I take a few steps towards him. He extends his arm forward, offering my lantern back to me. I've never got so close to the guide before, but he hasn't allowed it. Well, being in his presence this way feels unclear. I don't have the words to describe what it, tur what it turns inside of me. His eyes are expectant and patient, and I waste no more time. I move to accept it, but I flinch before I can grasp What's it. What's wrong? His face hardened, scrutinizing the unexpected reaction. I banish whatever expression was on my face and take hold of what's mine. It is nothing. He lets it go, though it does not make any attempt to leave. I do... I don't believe it's because he is worried about leaving me in the darkness. Uh, he still suspects something is wrong. The guide watches closely as I set the lantern aflame once more. As light gently washes over me, I smile at the sight. This tool I hold is one of the exceedingly few comforts one can have on Sinlos. I do not wish to part with it again. He is still here, and I begin to worry the guide intends to admonish me uh, for what I have done. I have let my emotions sew on my face again, because he starts to speak. Keeping a hold of your light is crucial. 
However, if you took no risk, your only way across could have been lost. It wasn't an empty self-sacrifice. In your position, neither option was correct. Neither was wrong. Our enigmatic lead, lead nods and upon finishing his thought, returns to his original place. I stare flabbergasted at the guide's back. By chance, I was put in circumstances that allowed our values to align. But never would I have expected him to acknowledge that. I made an acceptable decision. I stopped myself from getting further distracted. Instead, I glanced down at my light and realized the glow looks different. I wince. There's a large crack wickedly curving up the back. I'm thankful that it still works. Still, I fear that it will not hold out until morning. I look forlornly at the fragile glass surrounding the simple flame. In a way, this event has forcefully reminded me how fragile my own life is. One slip could mean the end of everything. Regardless, nothing can be done presently, and we've got enough to worry about. As it is, as it is I cannot let this consume me. We will continue to resist against this lake. After an untold period of time, the water begins to stir. There's an unusual gurgling and a sound I never thought would be this relieving to hear. Slowly, creakily, bridges make their nightly appearance. Sinlos is an overwhelmingly cruel environment. This island had felt like a safe haven such a short time ago, but that has been twisted to the point where I am grateful for a chance to return to the maze, and we, make not, and we may not even reach that. More Nixie are breaching the water and wrenching themselves onto the sand. The guide signals to all of us. We have to leave! Thanks to his position on the shore, the guide is able to board the bridges without confrontation. For the rest of us, however, the Nixie begin to crowd the opening. It appears they want to get on themselves. We have uh, desperately little time before we get cut off from the guide. I look to my lantern. This will... Will this little light alone be enough to cause them to disperse? Come on! Margaret's shout cuts straight through my thoughts. She's got the torch! She's advancing towards me, holding onto a heavy stick with the end set on fire as a makeshift torch. The same sight is striking. It won't last long! We need to get through now! She needs not say anymore. The three of us push her our way forward. As we advance, Margaret relays her plan. We'll toss the branch when we get close. The smoke spewing off this thing is making it even harder to see than usual. So you tell me when it's time, Kika. I can do that. The shore approaches closer and closer. Every single one of the Nixie turned their attention towards our small group. Now! After alerting M Margaret, she gives her all to hurl the flame ahead of us while avoiding setting the bridge itself on fire. The monsters flee from the torch. A path is clear. Bleh. We waste not one moment sprinting uh, towards the bridges. With the others near my side, I amble back into the maze. We don't stop until there is a considerable distance between us and the shore. It is there that we encounter the guide. Upon seeing his figure, I hide a sigh of relief. We haven't been left behind. Our arrival does not change the guide's empty expression. He does not say or do anything, instead allowing us all to catch our breath. Melly starts to laugh incredulously through uneven breaths. Such recklessness. I can hardly believe it worked. Margaret chimes in, equally as amazed and exhausted. I don't know how we managed to do nothing wrong. That feels far more fitting for this journey. Yes, you could have burnt your fingertips off. Or perhaps the bridges could have gone up in flames. Margaret looked at him curiously, but Mally gives her a wink. That would have been the outcome if I was handling the chores, you think? Margaret's lips quirk into a smile. Yes. <laughs> Straight, blunt, to the point. We treasure the moment of triumph for a little more before the guide ends his silence. We need to start walking. We've already lost much time as it is. I quickly straighten myself out and mull over our current situation. We start to consider how we are going to travel now that we only have two lanterns. I can stay ahead in between the guide's light and yours. I will be fine there. At that I become fraught with worry. I look over at Bamele, uh, concern rioting through my body as I wonder how he'll fare being so far away from a light source. Well, the three of us could walk together. If there's one person close by, I can't imagine it would make much of a difference having another. Furthermore, I believe we've all taken enough risks for each other already for this to not be a problem. Margaret, her consideration touches me. I smile gratefully at her. 
Belly and I confer with our eyes before silently agreeing with one another. We nod. Okay. We'll do that then. Thank you. Other than having a bit of a crowd as opposed to an entirely straight line, our journey moves ahead as it did the night before. The silent night creeps along as we carefully move through the thick fog, making certain not to bump into one another. Then my lantern blinks. I f it fizzled out. The three of us gasp simultaneously as I hold my breath, like time will stop with my breathing. To my great relief, the light flares back on. The air I'd anxiously been holding in releases as I sigh. What's going on? The guide halts, but does not bother to turn around as he asks the question. It was nothing. He, I watch as he shifts his head back to look at us. He stares. He gives his probing and deeply unnerving. He doesn't believe me. I return my gaze, my expression. I return his gaze, my expression blank. We remain locked in this moment. I can feel his patience with me slipping away. He chooses not to spend any longer waiting for an answer that will not come. The guide faces his back to us once more. He acts without a word, but I know he isn't satisfied. Our small group shares anxiety ridden looks as the guide moves ahead. I look down at my lantern. The crack seems larger than ever. I feel as though I am cracking with it. There's nothing I could do to fix it, should it go out for good. We need to keep going. We shouldn't speak of this. I can feel that they're apprehensive over the situation and undoubtedly curious as to how it happened in the first place. However, this is not the time. I don't want to draw attention to this for fear of the guide catching on. The chatter of the Nixie bubbles up out of the darkness and I gulp harshly. The thought crosses my mind that they too have noticed what just transpired. We walk quite a bit longer. The voices whispering amongst each other has died down with the uh, squinching and thinking of the prowlers has replaced them. It is difficult to trace the exact origin of the sound. All I know is that it is far too close for comfort. The guide stops abruptly, bringing us to an awkward halt. Luckily, there are no impacts between the three of us. Stay where you are. My eyes are drawn to the guide. He's making small movements, cautiously pressing his foot into the boards in front of him. A different spot. Could something be wrong with the bridge itself? My theory is proven correct almost immediately. The boards ahead are unstable. They may break when stepped on. Is there another path? This is our path. Move slowly and do not have two people on the same board at a time. I will cross first. When I find a stable section, I will inform you. Then you will follow my lead. He doesn't allow us time to answer before darting forward. The steps are light, but beneath him the wood creaks loudly. Why are the bridges this way? They can be burned into ash, and will still rise the next nightfall. And yet this spot is less stable than the rest. It is strange. There likely isn't a reason for it. It's just another piece of madness. The unnatural black water has a great deal of magic within. That is the most reasonable source of the bridges. If this maze is formed without an intelligent creator, that would explain its treacherous nature. The guide breaks his cautious steps, testing the security of the bridge. Where I am now is solid. You only need to reach this position. We'll be right there. I face the others. To ensure that there is enough light for all of us, I will go second. We need to keep enough distance between each other to not break the boards. Bavelli elects to lead and starts going forward, inching gingerly across the trembling boards. After there's some distance, I begin to follow, focusing on keeping my movement steady. Margaret is last to leave. The three of us carefully navigate the creaking, soggy wood, we attempt to keep the guide's path in hopes that the boards will hold. I feel my foot lay heavily on a board. It bends hair-raisingly under me. I wince as I slowly step off it, wondering if we should be crawling on all fours and spread out our weight over a wider space, but that may make us vulnerable to those creatures. My focus is broken when I hear a shout from ahead. Ellie's foot has snapped through the bridge. Wait. Despite every cell in me screaming to help, I force myself not to make any sudden movements. Melly lifts his foot up from the cups of the water and places it back on the board in front of him. Thank goodness, the entire section could have collapsed. 
Margaret looks at us, clearly concerned. A part of the board broke. Everyone is fine, however. You should avoid that section completely. All right. We're still in much danger as we stand here. I encourage him to begin moving once more. I make sure to skip over the broken board myself when, it, when I come to it. As I pass by the hole, I catch a bit of movement under the water. But when I look closely, there's nothing there. After a few more agonizing minutes, everyone reaches the other side of that trap. Trap is the easiest way to put that. Each of us three mutter various expressions of relief. There isn't a word from our guide. We continue our journey across the bridge, sharing small, sporadic bits of conversation. Until we're plunged into darkness. I immediately come to a screeching halt that almost makes the two near me lose their footing. I look down at my lantern. It is, it is as dark as the water. The three of us stare at it, a silent plead, pleading. A few moments pass, and yet the lantern remains cold and lifeless. In desperation, I jiggle the lantern. Somehow, something will click, and the light, or light will return. Nothing happens. I feel the others' nerves climb with every second. They shift uncomfortably as they watch me pathetically attempt to relight it. We are quiet, still hoping the guide won't notice. I see shaking and tapping the sides of the cracked glass, but that doesn't yield any results. I want my lantern itself and look over the internal workings. I cannot reach inside. Despite its appearance, the metal has retained the heat from before, and I would be burned. As the darkness stretches on, I frantically try to figure out what the problem is from sight alone to no avail. Your light is gone. The indifferent tone of the speaker is unmistakable. No, not yet. I look up from my work to see the guide is approaching us. I'm at a loss for words. He comes near and the edge of his light shelter us like a blanket. Relight it. My hand begins to tremble. I know it won't do anything, but I do as I demanded and hope for a miracle. I attempt to get the inner cord to catch flame. The lantern refuses to comply no matter what I do. The guide's eyes widen as the full scope of the situation dawns on him. My two companions start nervously fidgeting and whispering about the possible solutions. I hear each one getting shot down. What are we going to do now? Marcus's voice comes out shakily. I look the, at the guide forlornly. We're completely at his mercy now, if he has any despair at all. He coldly surveys the three of us. After silently deliberating, he narrows his eyes until there are slits in his face. I will allow one of you to remain in my light. Only one. One? That's insanity! Your staff creates more than enough light for the four of us. We could easily follow at a distance you would feel comfortable with. Someone who wants to live will share their light with no one. I will not share my light with three. He almost snarls at us. After everything that's happened, all that we've done, you're going to abandon two of us this easily? You truly are a bastard. Bamele! Stop. If you take so much as one wrong step towards him, all the guide will do is flee. There is no chance that fighting will end in more people surviving. Bamele doesn't say anymore, but grits his teeth. Margaret is completely frozen, her mind racing to process everything. Then... What about two? Could you please keep two of us safe? The guy sharply shakes his head. I will allow one and no more. Two will be left behind. Finality bringing out from his words. Lingering at a distance far behind my light will leave you vulnerable. The wisest option is to continuously move, even if it means going another way. Molly glowers at the guides hatefully. Besides me, Margaret begins to whisper something to herself. I can't make out what it is. A torrent of thoughts ripped through my mind as I tried to find some other way. Kika. My body stiffens as the guide has never referred to me by my name this way. It's jarring enough to gain my attention, even to miss the panic rising. You are the most likely to survive. The offer is for you. My eyes widen even further. No, I don't want that. I can't be the only one who... No, no. I turn my eyes toward my two companions. They, the both of them gaze back at me dejectedly, their horrifying resignation in their eyes. This cannot be happening. They shouldn't be going, not me. They, they should be the ones who remain safe. I'm nowhere near as sharp as you are. We both always knew that. There's a fragile, self-deprecating smile on his face. 
It makes my heart ache. My lantern broke because I foolishly dropped it. And I've already lost my glasses, so... I shake my head, refusing to watch them give up so easily. And that's where we'll end this one, and we'll come back to it next time. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, we'll hit like, that way I know you're enjoying the content I'm making, we'll hit subscribe, that way YouTube brings you back, here's what happens next, I won't take up any more of your time, have a good day, and I'll see y'all next time, bye!